Lovely Splendor is one of the hottest exotics to be introduced in the coming season, which is so good that they'll be nerfing it in the next season. So before that happens, I have a great build based around it that will combine the effects of Void 3.0 and blend it into the Solar subclass as a potential Solar 3.0 build. For example, Warmind Cells haven't been talked about so much since their nerf, but this build would introduce them back again and allow you to have better ad clearance options while everyone else is blind. Add in the Solar effects and the Glaive which will play a big role in the build and you'll conquer everything that faces you. Now, I wanted to see how Solar 3.0 could affect the following setup, so here's today's build that I'm sure you're gonna love. But you know what else is warm, loving, and make warm cells viable again? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it goes a long way for me. Starting off with the subclass, we'll be using Code the Siege Breaker and combining the subclass with Lawly Splendor to create an escalating damage build via grenades and barricades. A Lawly Splendor's ability to create sunspots on demand isn't all that powerful when you see that the following subclass has always been this strong. Although strength is more common in PvP, with his level of annoyance backing this up, in PvE its usage can be extremely powerful if you don't focus all of your support in this one area. To activate the exotic, you will need to take damage or use a barricade, and from there you can get healed and get damage boost. To play this out in our favour though, we are going to build into the sunspot aspect so that we can always have high damage and health regen when we need it the most. The Soul Invictus perk will allow us to get our health back as long as we net ability kills and this will also leave a sunspot in the making. We then have the Sun Warrior perk where sunspots will make our super last longer and recharge our melee plus grenades faster. So now you can see why I said don't focus too much into the activation of the exotic in mind. We want to make sure we have other areas of activating sunspots as relying on one method will do us no good. Plus, Titans have fast cooldown for barricades as part of their class abilities, but ideally we want to have multiple ways of creating sunspots. Next, we will want to invest into our stats and mods, and this is what will affect the build the most. For stats, we will want to have resilience up to 70 to 100 and discipline at 50 to 70 roughly. These are your two main stats that you'll be relying on the most for creating sunspots, so focus here to start with. Mod wise, we have powerful wealth for creating two worlds instead of one, elemental ordnance for creating worlds via grenades, wrath of rasputin for creating warm cells via silver splash damage, celia suppression for sending out suppression AoE effects via cells, and global reach for increasing the range of cells. Now the plan here is very simple. We're going to use the sunspots created to create warm cells as we go, and then use said cells to suppress targets in one easy go, but also gaining a damage boost for our weapons. From playing this, this will offer players many ways of creating sunspots on demand, and is very handy for allowing us to stay alive no matter how bad the situation gets. Combining solar AoE effects and suppression into one made ad clearing incredibly easy for those who have such a role in raids or by trying out legend tier content. A lot of these are easy to pull off and even without the following mods in mind, your options aren't even limited. Now for weapons, that can be anything you like, but my recommendations are also pretty good as a starting place. I have the Ace of Spades Exotic Hand Cannon for my primary, I know a lot of you may be looking at me oddly with this choice, but the weapon is perfect for the build in mind. For example, it has basically got Dragonfly built into it, so that every time we get a kill, we create an AoE Solar Explosion, which has also got a chance of activating Wrath of Asputin and a cell in the making. Next, the weapon gets a big damage boost if we activate the Momentum Mori perk, which will last as long as we like, as long as we net kills and so forth. And lastly, it gets Radar, which is more PvP but hey, it may come in handy one day. But truthfully, the weapon is super as it gives us another way of creating cells and it has a very strong damage boost every time we get a kill, which hurts like hell. Yes, I know it's more for PvP, but it doesn't get enough love for its users in PvE as well though. Now if you like something a bit more practical, then the Hung Jury, if you manage to get one, can roll the Firefly perk, and there's a Prime Aim as well. If not, then any weapon here can work, even if it doesn't have the given perks shown. For a secondary, we have Lubre's Ruin with Sleight of Hand and Unrelenting, and although Unrelenting is more favourable for the weapon, a Sleight of Hand is not so much, and I would recommend you try and get a version with the Immovable Object perk instead. 
Now the idea of this weapon is to make suppression effect on us even more chaotic when up against the powerful combatants we face. This will be done via suppressing glaive mod and is very powerful with stopping anyone within their tracks while we wail into them. This will be useful against mini bosses as they can be affected by the suppression effects and will create a very large opening that both you and your team can make full use of. On top of that, us taking damage and being critical will activate our Zotic Helm and this will act as a sort of protective shield where we can keep hitting the boss while recovering abilities and energy back and also deal extra damage to anyone caught within his range. It's risky on paper but viable for playing very aggressive when you need to. Now the glaive doesn't have to be this, you can of course swap this out for the enigma instead unless you want to use elemental armaments for whatever reasons. For heavy we have the Hazen Vengeance rocket launcher with tracking rounds and Vorpal and this is a great solar heavy to have if you don't have the gallo horn or can't use it at all. Heavy is always more down to the player choice and as we aren't using elemental armaments in setup it won't have that much of an effect unless against mini bosses or bosses alone. So please choose and pick whatever heavy you have in mind as this area isn't as highly focused compared to the primary and secondary used. For stats, as mentioned we need resilience and discipline to be at the same or near same level of each other as these two stats will be used constantly for our adventure. The great thing about sunspots is the ease of use behind them and how they can easily cover ability energy recovery in a fast pace. This means both discipline and strength can be at say 50 and as long as we have a sunspot available and stay in said sunspot we can recover easily within the given time frame. This then leaves you with your resilience which you can increase all the way to max or leave at 80 and then fill in the rest from there as titan resilience is connected to your barricades and these have very fast cooldown even when you're not at 100 to start with. So how do we support this one spot even more? Well adding on the installation mod will allow us to decrease the cooldown of our class ability via orbs of power collected which of course is also covered by the harmonic cypher mod and our glaive elemental type. We also have elemental worlds which will help boost the decreased time of our class abilities and abilities in general so you're pretty much covered for everything in mind. Discipline wise we have Bountiful Well and Elemental Ordnance where both these two mods will provide constant energy back and forth. We also have the Bomber mod which is also linked into our use of our barricades so these two intertwine means we can go back and forth with the two how we please. Then lastly we have the Ashes to Ashes mod where grenade energy will grant us super energy back and though our intellect is low it still has some level of use. Leftover wise we have the rocket launcher scavenger mod for extra rocket ammo and the suppressing glaive mod for suppressing combatants abilities over time. Now let's compile our list into one so you can get an overall idea as to generally what's happening. For head we have resilience, ashes to ashes, harmonic siphon and bound for world mods. Arm we have Discipline, Fastball, Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest we have Resilience, Concussive Dampener, Thermal Shot Plating, and Rifle of Rasputin mod. Leg we have Resilience, Insulation, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, and Celio Suppression mod. Mark we have Suppression Glaive, Bomber, and Global Reach mod. A bit of an old and new build setup that I'm sure you'll see more often as the channel grows. The following build allow you to master areas of combatants with ease via Sunspots and Suppressions alone. Now, Warmind cells have been hit hard with the past nerf to the effectiveness of Global Reach and although that made their usage drop dramatically overnight, their usage in general was still there, just not as common. As shown, I want to show you how Celia Suppression and Wrath of Rasputin mod is still just as powerful as ever and is a great alternative if you want to implement a void pre abilities within your own class. The setup is simple but still allow you to do a lot when things get heated on the field. Using our abilities to produce worlds and cells in one will allow us to set up a no-go area that prevents the combatants from moving up or doing a lot. As you can see from Eclipse, we can clear our areas with ease with our primaries and then use our abilities if we get a big batch of enemies in one. If by chance we can create a cell, then we can shoot it once and stun everyone within the vicinity and carry on from there. And this can be done multiple times until it fully detonates into one full blast. Our solar sunspots now will be used every time we use our barricades or just get a kill in general and you can see why this is really useful in something like legendary cyber missions or nightfalls as that one spot is giving you a huge boost in everything as long as we stay within it. And this is why I believe the build will be pretty damn powerful once solar 3.0 arrives 
you'll get a damage boost, suppression, healing, more sunspots, elemental wells, and plenty more where that comes from. And all you need to do is just play like normal. The Exotic Helm doesn't require a lot and isn't all that special in PvE, but it can be one built right, like shown. And sunspots have always been great no matter the content. Can you imagine what the build will be like once Solar 3.0 comes along? I can see the build having a few changes to incorporate the subclass more, but the template is very good as I imagine it to be. For an overall build for fun, you'll enjoy this if you're looking at making Sunspots and Suppression a full on build of its own. Just be aware though that Lowly Splendor will get nerfed at some point, but for now, have some fun with this one. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.